I'm going to call uh, the Wakefield Board of uh, Appeals meeting for Wednesday, April 24th to order. I'll remind everyone at the meeting that it is being recorded. It will be available on the website um, in a couple of days. As always, we're going to start by uh, taking a roll call of members. Uh, Dave Hatfield. Here. Chip Tarbell. Chip. Here. Mickey Feely. Here. Joe Pride. Here. Uh, Kasumi Humphreys. Yeah. And for the last time, Greg McIntosh. Here. <laughs> so, welcome. Wow. All right. With that, uh, and my name's Tom Lucy. Obviously, I am here. With that, our, our clerk is Joe Pride. I'm going to ask him to read the legal notice. Sure thing, Tom. Uh, consistent with the governor's orders extending certain provisions of the open meeting law, every effort will be made to allow the public to view and or listen to this meeting to the meeting in real time. If you don't have a camera or microphone on your computer, you may use the following dial in number 1301715-8592, meeting ID 8311503. 2589 passcode 391216. Please use only please only use dial in or computer, not both, as audio feedback will distort the meeting. This meeting will be audio and video recorded. In compliance with the Americans with Disabilities Act, this location is accessible to people with disabilities. Wakefield provides reasonable accommodations and or language assistance free of charge upon request. If you are a person with a disability and require information or materials in an alternate format, or if, you re or if you require any other accommodation, please contact the town's disability coordinator, William Renault, town engineer at three uh, at 781-246-6308 as far in advance of the event as possible. Every effort will be made to grant your request. Advance notification will enable the town to make reasonable arrangements to remove an accessibility barrier for you. One, continued hearings. Two, 24-41, I'm going to try my best on this. Jack Erbeczewski, Main Street Grill and Tap House, application for a variance under Article 16, Section 190-10 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw to replace two new signs on the premises. The property is shown as map 24, lot parcel 0H5 of the assessor's map and is located at 1099 Main Street. 3. 24-42, Joshua Mercurio, application for determination and or finding with respects to a continuation and extension of non-conforming use under Article 9, Section 190-50 of the Wakefield Zoning Bylaw related to, related to the raising of an existing single-family dwelling and the reconstruction of a new single family dwelling, the property is shown as map 19, lot parcel 146, 146 of the assessor's map and is located, located at 75 Nahat Street, Board of Appeals. Thank you, Joe. Yeah, welcome. Yeah, with that, we're going to start with our continued hearings. The first up tonight is cases 2377. 2378, 2379, Northeast Warehouse, Boston, LLC, located at 3 Melvin Street. Mr. McGrail, I thought I saw you on the screen. I believe this is your case. I'm here, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, um, Mr. Chair, members of the board. For the, uh, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail representing the applicant, Northeast Warehouse, Boston, LLC. Uh, with me tonight is uh, our architect, uh, San, uh, Tan Sadaku, and also our site civil engineer, John Ogren. Um, I don't know if they'll really be required to provide any uh, information or testimony, uh, but I wanted them here just in case. Um, <clears throat> we submitted, as you know, a package a few weeks ago in advance of the meeting and again on Friday. Um, and uh, it consisted mainly of a memorandum that's been issued by the Department of Public Works Engineering Division that um, states that all of their um, matters have been resolved to their satisfaction. Uh, completely. There's one that I, that has to be discussed that uh, I'll get to in a moment. Um, and in conjunction with that memo, um, as I'm sure you've had a chance to see, we submitted a revised site plan um, consistent with that memo. The memo refers to that uh, plan now dated J July 5th, uh, 2004. Um, and a stormwater report updated 
uh, stormwater pollution protection plan. Um, and as I've mentioned, all resolutions uh, have been obtained with that uh, engineering department. Uh, we also submitted uh, a landscape plan revised. It has now been meticulously matched to the site plan. No significant changes in the, um, or no changes in the landscaping materials from what you've seen, but some of the dimensions on the plans are a little bit different. So they've been put into sync. Um, and lastly, we submitted a revised architectural package. There was one change on that, um, that uh, you may recall the railings uh, on the ramps um, we had polished stainless in uh, Kasumi uh, board member Humphreys at one of the meetings had suggested that we should use the, a brushed stainless steel rail so they wouldn't be overly shiny. So that's been changed on the plans to brushed uh, stainless steel. Um, and, you know, basically the plans, as I've mentioned, were really updated um, for issues not relating to the aesthetics or the look of the site that the board has reviewed and I think was satisfied with uh, is, is by way of example, uh, the, you know, some of the changes on the plan are uh, joints and restraints on the water system components uh, had to be changed to be reflective on the plan. Um, a hydrant and valve box detail had to be spelled out a little bit more for the engineering department, and that has been done. Um, and uh, the SWIP plan they wanted, which I told you that we have submitted, you have a copy of that now, and they're satisfied with that. Um, they wanted an update on the accessible ramp detail uh, to make sure it was consistent with DPW standards, and that has been addressed. Um, and then they wanted a, a pavement detail showing three and a half inch thickness of pavement, uh, which has been done. Um, the operation and maintenance plan for the drainage has been revised according to their standards and as shown on the plan. Um, they wanted the existing conditions water map, a watershed map adjusted, which has been done. And then they wanted the hydrocab model uh, revised for a different calculation to make sure the drainage was consistent with that and that was done. And then some inverts uh, on recharge of the uh, drainage system. But again, most of these, if really all these changes are, are um, not um, aesthetic to the project. They're really mechanical in detail. Um, as, as I've said, the plans have all been submitted for the record. Uh, it's up to the board if you'd like me to go through these in detail. Um, and I'll defer to you on that. I really have highlighted uh, the changes that uh, that are reflected in the plans. But John, John Oak is here and he can point them out if you feel that necessary. No, what we've been waiting for is the, the compliance with the DPW memos and, and with the, everything that needs to be done there. I'm fine, but uh, I'm going to throw it open to the board. Uh, whether or not they want to go through the, this presentation um, or not. No, Mr. The board. Mr. Chair, in the past, we've always, as long as DPW signs off when we're dealing with stormwater and engineering, I, we've always kind of, you know, not worried about the details of what they're looking for, like junction boxes or hydrant stuff. So, I'm fine. I think that as long as DPW is good, we're I'm good. Any other, any other comments or questions? Yeah, the only question I would have, and maybe I just missed it, but Brian, you said there was some sort of comment you were in the DPW memo that you were going to go over or mention yes. or something. Yep, I was just going to get to that if I okay. could. Yep. So the last Mr. comment. Mr. Chair. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, I, go ahead, Dave. So you said um, we got the updated landscape, the updated site site plan, still dated last July. So no yeah. recent updates. No, that it was basically coordination going back and forth. So every that plan is the correct date, Dave. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned architectural plan. I don't recall getting one recently. We have one from last June. I think the one I have. That so was, was there an actual change to the architecturals or June? No, actually? just really the brush stainless is the is the only change um, that on the railing. So. That was a, on the submittal, that was a, a link, um, not oh. a PDF. Okay. I probably missed the link, but okay. Thank you for that. But there were no changes on that from what you've seen. Nothing still has a solar solar on the roof and, and no changes. Just the only change was the brush, the brushed uh, stainless on the railings. Okay. Got it. Thank you. So, uh, Mr. Chair, may I address the... Uh, yeah, please do. So I, I um, 
but full disclosure, I wanted to point this out um, and not have it lost in the shuffle, that the last comment on the DPW memo uh, was, I'll read it, the Department of Public Works um, re recommends a traffic mitigation payment to fund town-wide signal improvements and infrastructure required due to this uh, cumulative impacts associated with this project and other growth in the area. The payment should be consistent with similarly scoped projects in town. The applicant can contact the engineering division to discuss options. Um, so that was open. That's an open issue. Um, I had conversations with the engineering department. Uh, as you know, um, the board uh, did not, because of the limited traffic on, involved on this, uh, there's only uh, seven increased trips at peak hours um, because it's, it's just, as it's, it's was discussed during the process of these hearings, there's not a significant traffic impact. So this was not required to go to the traffic advisory committee. Um, and, um, you know, I advocated as a town engineer that this project should really not be charged any mitigation um, because of the nature of the, the little impact on the traffic. Um, and, you know, he didn't dispute that. He said, you know, that's really going to be up to the board. Um, but the town engineer didn't seem to have an issue with it. Okay, board members, any thoughts or comments or questions? I would agree that they shouldn't be hit with a mitigation charge because they shouldn't have to control. I mean, it's basically the same use they've had. They're just upgrading their building. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Seven, seven yeah, trips. I mean, it's, it's hard to justify a mitigation payment for seven peak trips. It's where my head is, but I, I did want to throw it out to the board. Agreed, Mr. Chair. We agreed as well, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, all right. Moving on, Brian. Yep. Um, so that that's what I have. Um, you know, I have not presented any draft findings or conditions. And, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention, I don't know if the if the board would want an O and M plan for this project as a whole. I assume you would, just for maintenance of the site, the landscaping and uh, you know, the building materials to make sure it's all kept in good order. Um, so um, I would um, I would like to, you know, at some point when the board's ready to submit draft findings and, and draft conditions in an O&M plan. Uh, the other thing is the the signs that are proposed because they're, they're you know, the, uh, because of their size are going to need a signed variance uh, after going through it in detail. So that's going to be a separate application, which I'm going to submit ASAP. So, you know, we will need to continue this for uh, findings, conditions, O&M, and I'd like to keep the, get the application for the sign variance in so this whole thing could be closed out as one package. I agree with that. I'd want to continue this until we've had time to see the sign variance so we can do it as one, uh, along with, um, you know, proposed conditions and uh, findings. And that, another, seems to, I, that seems to me to June at this point then. Yeah. And, and I have a list, I've kept the list of, you know, I have a detailed list of all the conditions you talked about, but um, I've got them all, um, you know, that, uh, um, so I will make sure they include. How, all much, time? How much time do you need, Brian? Um, I'd like to continue this to the meeting on the 26th. I have a family commitment in mid-June, a big family commitment, and you guys meet again on the 12th. I'll probably be at that meeting, but I'm going to have the only be able to handle limited work well because of a, a family commitment in on uh, mid June. So I would request that it be continued until uh, June 26th, and then um, you would need an extension of time uh, until the end of August. I would think. Board members, how are you feeling about that? It's fine. Feel good. Good plan. Brian, I just, it, because it's been continued for a while, might need a refresher on the variances. Yep. I, you know, there's a special permit site plan review. Makes sense. That's right. Binding makes sense. You know, I think that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Just refresher on the uh, specifics of the variance being. Sure. Requested. The variance, the variance relates to the parking because, you know, with warehouse, it's, um, it, it, it's a ridiculous amount of parking. Um, as you know, so it, it really just relates to the parking numbers. 
Okay. I didn't know if there was more to it or nope. buffer scripts or any, you know, whatever. Nope. I just, okay. Mainly just the parking volume. Okay. Yeah. No, agreed, David. It has been a while given we've been waiting for the DPW uh, when this project team to work it out. So yep. we were there, but we, we had to have those details finalized. But it's been a little bit longer than normal for a case like this, for sure. And I would agree. I think we would continue it out to the end of May, but if we're going to push this out to get the signed package and everything all at once, then it makes sense to extend it out um, at their request out to the end of August. That gives us some time to hopefully wrap it up in June, maybe the July meeting at worst, and potentially, and then time to get the decision yep. squared away, or three decisions squared away. So. Yep. Okay. Any other comments or questions from the board? Mr. McGrell, anything else to present? No, Mr. Chair. All right, with that, I'm going to open it up to the public. See, there's a member of the public with their hand raised, Ms. Uh, Della Volpe. Uh, if you can identify yourself and give your address for the record, please. Yes. Good evening. Brahma Delavopi, uh, 8 Cyrus Street. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, the memo from the DPW um, concerning the seven trips, is that memo in reference to any additional traffic signaling? No, there is no traffic signal. Okay, so what essentially does the, the memo from the DPW say? It, it basically agrees with um, a position taken by the traffic engineer on what the traffic counts are going to be resulting from the project. Okay, so, and where might I get a copy of that memo? Uh, I think you can get it from the building department. I'm sure Gail can give it to you. Okay, thank you. Um, now, the variance on the parking, what are the numbers are revolving around that? Uh, a second. Yeah. Just open my plan, just bear with me. Yeah, sure. Thank you. All right, just to confirm, none of these have changed since we talked about them, right? I'm sorry, Greg. None of these have changed since they were presented a few months ago, right? No. Yeah. Here we go. So the required part, the required parking um, for employees and you know, et cetera, or users would be um 58 spaces and we're asking for a reduction of 30 spaces my client provided testimony or he really believes that they only need about 20 because it's a warehouse use there's not a lot of people that work there Ms. mr mcgrail i also think we asked you mm -hmm. to reduce the amount of parking so that there could be more green space that's right so the answer to your question, Ms. Delavopi, it's going for the required would be 58 and we're asking for a reduction down to 30. Thank you very much for, for looking that up. Yeah. Um, is there um, an architectural plan that's been, I haven't been able to find it online. Um, is that something that, that can be pulled up quickly now? Or yep. if someone can direct me to where I can see that, that would be very helpful. Ms. Delavopi, I'll have Gail send you that stuff uh, you know, uh, we went over this in significant detail over several months span. It's a little bit of the 11th hour now. I, I, I certainly understand. Want certainly want to share the information with the member of the public. Uh, there'll be another hearing. So yes. I'm going to just ask that we forward you the material. You'll have a more than ample chance, as you heard, we're about to continue this to the end of June. Sure, so that's fine. So now and the end of June, you'll have an opportunity to look at the material and uh, certainly be feel free to share any input uh, prior to that meeting. Thank uh, you. Through the um, email address, and we'll take it up at that here. Regarding the signage, um, sir, um, where is that going to be located? Just real quick. Is it going to be located at the warehouse, or is it going to be located on Water Street? It's going to be on the warehouse. It's going to be facing towards Water Street. Is it going to be lit? Halo lit with a limitation on hours that will be set by the board. Okay. Uh, uh, there's an awful lot. There's, there, there's an exceptional amount of light pollution and light spill 
in this area. There are actually people who live uh, surrounding um, that area, industrial or not. Um, just to be very, very mindful uh, that light spill is bad. And I believe that this board has an obligation not to add to it. Um, is there a lighting plan that could be sent to me, Mr. Chair? Sure. And as you heard, uh, Ms. Delavope, that uh, they'll be applying for a sign variance. So you'll, you'll be able to see that material as well at the next hearing. Uh, and we can certainly share the lighting plan with you as well. The board has and continues to take light pollution very seriously. Um, so we'll have a keen eye on that as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. No, happy to help. Okay, uh, with that, any other members of the public here that would like to comment? Hearing seeing none, back to the board. Mr. Chair, I move that we continue this hearing to our June 26th, 2024 meeting and accept the applicant's request to extend the time for the board to render a decision um, to August 30th, 2024. Seconded. Motion has been made and seconded. Any comments or questions from the board? Hearing, seeing none, regular voting members, Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. Mickey? Yes. I vote yes. Matters continue. Gail, if you could just, uh, I'll work with you to make sure that we get Ms. Delavope the information that she's requested. No problem. And Gail, on the submittal, um, just so it's not, it, it, it's a, the architectural plan, which has lighting in there, is um, is a link. Okay. It's a link in the email that I sent to the board. Okay. And not one of the attachments. So. Okay, very good. I'll forward that. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Uh, moving on. Next matter is case 2420-32 Nahan Street, LLC. Um Looking for Mr. Haverty. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Uh, Jonathan Silverstein, um, one of Mr. Haverty's uh, partners, and uh, he had a conflict tonight, so I'm standing in for him. Okay. Um, I believe that uh, with me this evening are Andrew Jones and Peter Sandorsi from Phoenix Architects. Um, I know that... Uh, um, Scott Green, oh, I think I see him, uh, is on as well. Um, and I think that's it from our team this evening, but someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and I understand that the focus tonight was going to be on reviewing the revised plans that have been submitted. Um, and uh, I will turn it over to Andrew or Peter to walk the board through those, unless, Mr. Chair, you have something you wanted to... Yeah, the only thing I would add is that we asked some pretty specific questions, some from informational questions as it relates to your client and uh, some other things. So I'm hoping that Mr. Harvey shared that with you, that we were hoping to get some answers tonight on. Um, yes, so... That, um, you, 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 you can proceed with the, the architectural first, and then uh, I just don't want that information lost in the shuffle no so may maybe if it's okay i'll just address that really quickly i know that um, mr green is um putting together an updated bio to provide um some background that the board has requested uh he certainly has plenty of experience and as you know the um mass housing has issued a pel which uh definitively establishes that he's qualified um for legal purposes, but certainly we have no issue sharing that information with the board. I, I think he indicated that um, he should be able to have that pulled together within the next week and, and get it to you. In the meantime, I will note that the um, PEL application to mass housing, which the town did receive, and, and certainly we can provide an application uh, or a copy of that to you if you haven't seen it, uh, but I suspect you had uh, has a fair amount of information uh, regarding his background and experience, but we are going to get something, you know, pulled together specifically to address those questions for you and submit that. We are very specifically looking for similar size projects that were executed by uh, the owner group. So um, we've, we've obviously seen the application, but now we're uh, 
we're entering our third meeting where we've asked, I think, a pretty straightforward question uh, that's getting danced around a little bit here. But I don't want to waste everyone's time. Um, we, we do expect that information. This board, as we've said several times, this board likes to go and visit other projects that owners have done so we can see the quality of work they've done, the type of work they've done. Um, it seems to me if your owner has completed some of those projects, they would have very specific knowledge at the tip of their tongue about those addresses in those cities and towns. But we'll, I guess, continue to wait. Um, but that is something we are expecting. So please effort that. Um, and let's, um, I don't know if other members of the board have anything else to add uh, before we head to the architecturals. Okay, let's move forward. Okay, thank you, Jonathan. And uh, good evening, Mr. Chair and board members. My name is Andrew Jones, represent Phoenix Architects on 32 Nahant Street. I will share my screen, just give me one moment. Can all the board members see? Yes, we can see. Okay, so here's a new updated uh, front graphic of the building um, that have taken some architectural changes from the last meeting. Um, these included, uh, the biggest one is messing with the roof line a little bit. What we're trying to do is make these two front facing gambrels more uh, predominant and anchoring them in between the connection and the left side wing. Um, other things we did was, uh, as Kazumi had mentioned, making a more formal entry by doing a double door instead of a single door. And as you'll see, some uh, minor changes on the inside. So just to show the previous graphic that we presented versus the newer one before, everything was all at the same height, the roof lines. So it makes it feel flat. Um, you know, we are holding the 35 foot height restriction just to be, um, you know, in line with the other residential homes around it. And as you can see now, what we're doing is, like I had said before, just lowering the roof lines of the left and right hand side. The reason for that is the left hand and right and middle side is going to be where there are condensers. So the roof line's going to go up roughly four feet and go to a flat and then below it will be a flat roof that can house the condensers. I have updated a roof line and I will show that shortly. So one, one minor tweak on the first floor is that we move the mail room towards the back entry. Um, as seen in the last site renovation, uh, the UPS and Amazon trucks and everything else was in the back, was gonna park in the back left-hand side of the site. Um, before we had the mail room in the entry. So it would cause a long travel. And so we found room towards the back that makes more sense. Besides that, none of the units really change. We have on a roof plan now. And what we're trying to do here is as stated before, the two gambrels on the front hand side, um, we're trying to be, make them more predominant. So now you can see they're running all the way through towards the back. And then you can start to see where the roof line will be flat. So this roof line will come up to four feet and then drop down. So where the elevator shaft is, access panel, they'll be able to come up and there'll be condensers along here and along here. And besides that, not much has changed. This is all the, still the same materials used. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Andrew, do you have um, right side, left side, and rear elevations? I do. So here's the right and the rear. So the right-hand side now, you can see this is one of the main gambrels that's going to run all the way across. And you can see how they tie back in on the rear side. This is the front and left hand side. Right. So can you go back to the rear? Yep. So there does this set into a hill or why are there no windows on kind of the left where your cursor is now? Right here towards the left. It's yeah, mostly that whole, that whole side. 
Yeah, we could definitely add windows. I'll go back to the first floor to show. It was mostly, you know, with parking being right there, um, we thought to use that side as more of a private side so you're not looking right out to the parking lot on the first floor. So there are windows, one in the bedroom, two in the living area, but we could definitely look to add a few more windows back there. We have no window in the bathroom. Yep. Which I always yep. think is an important thing, even yep. if it's even if they're high windows, you know, it's yeah, sub, well, sub thing. Absolutely, I think we could also get one in right in the hallway in the vestibule before you enter yep. into the loading space. It's just the the rear of the buildings feel feels very um, second class, if you would, you know, and and we're always trying to. It just doesn't. Understood. Yeah. I also think too, you know, that that is the great view back there beyond where it goes into the wetlands and whatnot. So. Right. I mean, so it's like, yeah. And, yeah, and you can see we, we, carry, we carried it above, so we can definitely bring it down. It was mostly just kind of the thought of not having, you know, headlights at night and stuff like that kind of blinding you, um, pulling in. And Kazumi had mentioned about, you know, one thing about moving some of these windows because they're centered in between the parking. But we felt that what this is doing is exactly what I was saying. It's kind of putting in between the parking spots. So when someone's pulling in, they're not being blinded by the headlights. Okay. Um... If you could stop sharing for a second, I'm going to probably ask you to toggle back and forth between sharing, depending on comments or questions. But it, it's right. helpful for me to be able to see the board. Uh, Kasumi, I see that your hand's up. Yeah. Um, last last meeting, I asked about if you can mix a little bit more of two-bedroom and three-bedroom unit. And I don't see you did uh, the unit count didn't change for this presentation. Yes, we we try to explore um, again more in, but we are packed as it is. The square footages of each unit kind of speak for themselves. Um, we also feel like one bedrooms is a really good opportunity um, in a lot of good ways for um, younger generation people trying to get into Wakefield. Um, so it, it, we, we did look at it. It's just right now we're pretty landlocked and there's not much space. Is that coming from the, the client request or the ratio it's, of the units? It's a little bit of both. Okay. I still I still feel you should have more mix of two bedroom and three bedroom and a little bit less of the one bedroom unit. Um and then the other comment is on the, the first floor door to the exterior. I don't think you have um you have a clear space push and pull. And especially you have the handicap parking lot right outside of that door, unless you are planning to have um the auto door operator. Okay. I'll, so I'll you might that. you might want to look at that. Um, it looks very also it looks very close to the mailroom door and the last unit entry door. Yep. I see what um, you're saying. That's that's my comments. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Kasumi. Any other anybody else from the board? Yeah, Tom. I um, I mentioned um, a few weeks back or whatever it was. To basically chop the left side off and move the building over. Uh, obviously, that didn't happen. Is, did you have an explanation for that, or just other than you don't want to lose the units? <laughs> yeah, it, it's pretty much that, and we're we're just at this point landlocked. With even if you did chop it off, then it, the building shifting left affects all the parking, and um, yeah, we looked at it, but. That's where we're at right now. You glanced over it, I'm sure. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Anybody else? 
Andrew, is the is the owner on with you tonight? Yep. Just curious. Okay, thank you. Well, I wanted to know. I couldn't see who's on. All right. If no one else is going to comment, um, I'm going to uh, just say I completely agree with Joe. I I think that wing of the building should go. I think this there's too much density for this site. I think we can revisit it when we go over the parking and we see the site plan along with this and see the, the constraints that a building of this size is creating for this size lot. Uh, I'm not, as far as I'm concerned, I'm not done with the number of units with the massing or the density on this site. Uh, we know we're going to have traffic coming back. So I think that's going to inform our discussion with that. Um, but Joe, I, I think you're spot on on that comment. And uh, uh, I think you're going to hear, and I don't want to get into it too much, but you know, the during TAC, folks are concerned about that overhang on that parking because if that first level, uh, they have parking underneath the building. So there's some concerns raised at TAC about that. So I'll, I'm going to wait until we have that discussion uh, to, to react to that. So Joe, don't lose that thought. I think it's still a good one. Um, yeah, well, I mean, they, they, they're going to, I know he mentioned parking, but you lose units, so you don't need as much parking. Right. So, right. So. I mean, the, the density is crazy on this. It's just way too much, but I really want to tie that into parking and site and everything else. So yep. Agreed it doesn't too. really fall too much on architectural. Mm -hmm. um, just want to put a flag in the ground on that for sure. Oh, Absolutely. Right, Trust Mr. Chair, we're with, with, us helping you hold it. Right. So we're going to come back to site. I mean, we talked, we had raised earlier points. I think part of the initial presentation was just again the size of the building and more going on on the site, amenity space. You know, not just getting a few shrubs here and there, but actual outside green space for the tenants and their guests. You know, um, so again, it can be part of that discussion when we talk about traffic, parking, ongoing site. But again, it comes and then it potentially comes back to shrinking the building yeah to make that happen right because we're pretty as andrew's saying landlocked but there's a reason for that because of the site <laughs> so yeah anyway so it's not for flipping. tonight it's not specifically architectural it's part of the overall when we yeah. circle back on those other topics so yeah. no but that being said i appreciate the effort to break down the masking of the building with the strategies that you've used in the materials um i'm okay with that thank you I think a former member would be okay with it too, heading in the right <laughs> direction, <laughs> but more work to be done. <laughs> if I can channel okay. my inner McBain. <laughs> Understood. Any other, uh, any other comments or questions from the board? Hearing, seeing none, I'm gonna open it up to the public at this point. If there's any member of the public that's here that would like to comment on the um, material that was presented tonight, uh, please use the raise hand function in Zoom or somehow make yourself visible so I can identify you. Uh, Jordan Lapides, if you could give your name and address for the record, you're on mute right now. Jordan, did you want to say something? I see your hand up. Sorry, can you hear me now? I can. Are you able to hear me? I am. Thank you. Um, yeah, so Jordan Lapidus, um, 31 to Hot Street. So um, new to the area. So excuse me if this has already been brought up. And it's not necessarily tied to the architecture again. But I just think some long, hard thought needs to go into this in terms of the density that's been brought up. You know, just being here for a few months now. There are several hours of the day already where Nahant Street is a deadlock. And then to add 32 units or something crazy like that to the street, um, it, the street can't even add two more homes, never mind apartment units. Um, it, there's kids in the area. It's, it's just way too dense. I mean, you want to move this thing up to where the train is and all that? Sure. But you're throwing apartments into a, a residential neighborhood with kids that can't afford this, this level of density. It just can't. If you live in the area, you know it wouldn't be safe. There'd be way, there's already too much traffic as it is. Um, so again, I know it's not about the architecture, but I just think that needs to be put out there. 
um, th this does not bode well with what's already on the hot street. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Jordan, what I would just say, though, is that uh, it, at upcoming meetings, meetings regarding right. this project, we're going to have um, our traffic, the, the town has traffic subject matter experts, include the police, the fire, our own traffic engineer. Uh, we'll engage with this project team's traffic engineer. Um, so I encourage you to stay uh, informed, stay in the loop, because we will be discussing those matters. And uh, as 31 now, uh, Nahat, you're obviously right across the street. Uh, it'll be good to have your voice in in the dialogue. So, absolutely. And if if I may, sorry, Thomas. Uh, one other question: I, I wasn't able to join while the plans are up. Are the are, is the is this going behind thirty two Nahat and thirty six Nahat Street, or is there plans to tear down those two homes and then build on the two lots? It's building on the two lots, tear the homes down. Okay, so I mean, this would literally be like we're looking at the front our front door look at these the construction. I don't, I don't even know how that would work with the amount of traffic that's already on the hot street, but again, don't want to rant. So thank you. Yep. Thank you. Uh, I see Colleen Palmer with your hand up. Colleen, you're muted as well. If you could uh, identify yourself for the record and your address. Well, I'm not going to the hot street. And I'm sorry I didn't catch the number of parking spaces that were displayed in the architectural map. I was wondering if someone could remind me of that number. So we only presented the architecture. Um, the site plan was presented last time and hasn't changed. Um, is, I is it appropriate for me to ask that question in this? Oh, absolute, absolutely. Absolutely, Colleen. Not, not necessarily tonight, but we're going to go over traffic, parking, um, at a future meeting. So uh, again, I encourage you to okay. uh, to stay uh, informed and, and to attend the meetings because there, there will be an appropriate meeting Well, that will be the entirety of what we talk about. So. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I see another hand, uh, Wanjun Yi. If you could come off mute and identify yourself yeah. uh, for the record yes. with your address. This is Wan Jun Yi from 35 Nahang Street, which is right across um, 32. And uh, I do second Jordan. Um, I think there's there's going to be too much traffic um, and it's going to be a dead end for, you know, for our neighbors. Um, we, we can't afford that heavy traffic. So Nahang Street is already you know, every day, every single minute, it's, you know, it's, it's very uh, heavy traffic. So if we have another additional 32 unit, I can't imagine how, how heavy that traffic is. So um, I, I don't know if uh, any further, um, like hearings regarding the, um, like this, uh, tr from the traffic perspective, uh, please involve us. So uh, yep, we like yep. to hear. Yep. We meet uh, the schedules. You should, you should go online at the town. Uh, our agendas are posted. You should keep track of when we're meeting. You will not receive a specific notice. So it's a little bit on the neighbors to keep up themselves on this. So I encourage you to do that. And uh, again, as I said, that we'll be discussing traffic and the site plan, which includes the number of parking spaces and how people uh, get in and out of the site and, and all those sorts of matters at a future hearing. So please do pay attention and uh, we encourage you to attend those meetings. Um, uh, uh, by the way, is that meeting will be held online, uh, both online and uh, offline or just online via Zoom? We're, we're still meeting via Zoom. So I would assume it is. At some point we'll go back to in-person meetings, but there's no date that's been given to the board. Uh, so okay. I would be, I expect it to be a Zoom meeting. Got it. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? Hearing seeing none, back to the board. Pleasure of the board. Do we have any update as to when TAC is going to be meeting on this project? I do not. 
what was the last one that they were trying to get something done for May, the beginning of May? Yeah, and uh, I think they're trying to uh, finalize those memos. They know that we want them to appear at this meeting. We want to do one night that has the traffic studies for both this project and the one further down, the other 40B further down the street of 119. Um, so they're, they're aware, both Chief Sullivan, Chief Scory, Lieutenant Anderson, our traffic engineer are, are prepared to, to attend a meeting. I'm just trying to get a date when they'll all be here. I would anticipate it would be maybe the second meeting in May by the time we get to that at this point, since we don't have word yet. Yeah. Would it make any sense to have a special meeting just on, on that and bring everybody together so that Although these are all continued hearings now, so it could be first up too. Yeah, I'm open to that. It's up, you know, it's whether or not we can get uh, a quorum of the board. Um, and the availability of the other parties, but. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but I'm I'm laser focused on this, Chip. I've been trying to effort. Yeah, no, I know you are. I just didn't know if we had any update on it yet. Yep. No, I appreciate your we effort. In we lost a little bit. Well, anyone with kids was, wasn't really around last week, so that hurt us a little bit. So with school vacation week. Yeah. So um, it's understandable that some folks from the town weren't working. So, um, so I agree, you, Mr. Chair, what's next? I mean, we could continue to two weeks. I just don't know what's next. What's the punch list? What's the plan to potentially review if we don't have traffic, right? So what's in two right. weeks? Um, I agree, Dave. Um, you know, we could look at lighting, we could look at landscaping, but again, based on the conversation of the board, we're going to want to discuss, based on the traffic, the size of the project, which could change all that. So I'm, I'm open to suggestion. I don't want to waste our time. I don't want to waste the development team's time either. So if we're not going to be ready to the second meeting in May, maybe we should hold off till then. Or, or we they can, have, we, or we they have that additional info we were asked for, and maybe yeah. it's a quick update on where they are with traffic. You know, maybe that by then the meeting's been scheduled, and it's a quick update. So, again, in the interest of moving it along or keeping it on our radar, maybe we continue for two weeks and at least get a quick update and maybe yeah. some more info that we've requested. Right. So, Mr. Silverstein, if you could talk to Mr. Haverty, I've talked to him about being in in a little bit better communication with us. I'd like that to happen. I don't want to waste the development team's time if we're not ready to really do anything in two weeks, but I agree with Mr. Hatfield's recommendation that we continue for two weeks and that if the TAC has their memo and their members are available to hold, uh, uh, to come to the meeting and discuss traffic and parking and how the site works in terms of vehicles, uh, we can do that. So I'm going to encourage, uh, I'll, I'll reach out to you or uh, Mr. Haverty regarding this. And um, so we can plan appropriately for the next meeting. Our folks sure, Mr. Chair. So uh, yeah, that, that sounds fine. Um, and we will certainly have um, Mr. Green's information that the board requested regarding other projects he's worked on uh, in advance of uh, the meeting in two weeks. Um, my understanding, and again, I haven't been as involved in the project as Mr. Haverty, but um, I'm not sure that there's anything we can do in terms of um, getting uh, feedback from TAC. Um, no, that that's in the town's court. And okay. um, all I would ask you to do is look at the, the dates in May and uh, have your development team ready to meet uh, just in case we're ready to go. And we'll certainly, if we don't have much to discuss, we'll uh, we'll let you know that so you're not paying people to be here. So, um, okay, sounds good. I I do know. I was just uh, curious, so I checked. It looks like this project was on TAC's agenda for its meeting last week or a couple weeks ago, April five, I guess. Yeah, um, well, I attended that meeting. We went okay. over a lot. There were some takeaways and some to do list things that I emerged okay. from that. Um, so. I, we're waiting to hear back on that. So, understood, Mr. Chair. Real quick, um, in this packet he sent us, like day one, there is 
there is a list of projects he did, but I, I mean, it would be nice to have some pictures or something. I mean, 747 Main Street condos, 858 Main Street condos, Oakdale development. I, I mean, that's the list, but I don't, you know, it would be nice to see, you know, progress photos of that. And and a little bit more detail on what the projects entailed. That's That's where we were going. We all have okay. that. Yeah. So I think people looked at that and we're trying to take a deeper dive on that um, to understand it. Mr. Green, I see your hands up. Yes. I'll take pictures of all the projects and do a nice, they're already doing a, a nice booklet on it and in description of each of the projects, some of the bigger ones too. All right. That I'll sounds good. As detailed as possible for you. Thank you for your time. And Chip, I like that idea about the windows. I thought that was a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I come up with every one every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Thank you're welcome. You. Uh, with that, back to the board. Dave, I think you were about to make a motion to continue for two weeks. Yep. yep. Unless anyone else had anything. No. All right, Mr. Chair, I move that we continue this hearing to our May 8th, 2024 meeting. I'll second that. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? We're already we're already extended out to the end of August, so we're good on the extension for now. Yeah, so this is a little bit on the town side, so I'm not going to ask the, the 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 development team to to do anything. Right. Um. So with that, regular voting members, Dave. Yes. Joe. Yes. Mickey. Yes. Chip. Yes. I vote yes. Matters continued to the next hearing. Thanks very much. Have a good night. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, with that, we're on to new hearings. Case 2441, located at uh, 1099 Main Street. And as we begin this, um, I think that uh, the applicant has filed inappropriately for a variance when it's a really special permit under 19101F. Um, but for board members, they've applied for a uh, something more stringent than a special permit. So in some ways, we've advertised uh, something more stringent. Um, I'm wondering if we just take it up anyway and for the special permit, but it should be noted is it'd be good if uh, Mickey or uh, Greg could look at that, make sure that I'm right. I think it's, like I said, 190-101-F. It's really a special permit, not a variance. It, it is. I noticed that as well, Mr. Lucy, not having our sign specialist here with us anymore. Yeah, but, I, I, I had to actually do some work. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a special permit. But in the past, we have, as long as we've advertised, it's a subject matter. Most people don't know whether variances are special permits or, you know, if well, anybody comes to talk about it, they're going to be here. And so I, like I said, and, if and if more stringent. Exactly. Uh, where we easily can and have in the past uh, changed it, I may say, on the fly uh, here, um, because probably it's not an attorney that had applied for this. My bet is it's probably the signed package people. Yeah, if it was going from a special permit to a variance, I'd have a different opinion. But where, yeah. again, you know, it's, it's also opposite. it's also going that existing where the existing signs are on the building so we're not you know i yeah it was just because we have jurisdiction is why it's got to come back in front of us mickey you got a feeling on this um i i agree with chip in that um it'd be it'd be um it'd be easier going from a variance to a um it, it, it would be a special permit rather than a variance Okay. And it'll be less stringent. So you think we're good to go? Yep. Okay. So, Mr. Chair, call me crazy, but I was by there the other day. I think the sign's already up. I might no. I, can I? Can I, I, I? Yeah, hold on one second. Um, yes. Juan. So you think yeah. the sign is already up, Joe? Nope. Did I, I, is it or not? I, I feel like I was making a U-turn the other day, and I saw it up there, and I was taken aback because I remember it looked the exact same. Maybe I didn't see it correctly. I see but... Mr. Hatfield nodding his head that he might be agreeing with you. At this point, 
Juan, are you representing um, this applicant? Yes. Uh, good afternoon, members. How are you? You can identify <clears throat> yourself in the company. Uh... Yeah. Uh, the name is uh, my name is Juan Jaramillo, twenty nine Orsini Drive. Um, I'm from Southeast Tech in Riviera, and I'm representing. And I'm here actually right next to Jack, who's the owner of the place. And um, uh, let me explain a little bit what happened. Um, he filed <laughs> for. <laughs> it's gonna be a little long, <laughs> but uh, he filed in the in the past to replace the signs, just to change the um the fa the faces on the actual light boxes there. But it came to a point that the the city don't allow any light light boxes in the city, so they they reject it. So he applied for special permit. Um, to uh, we actually applied for the special permit following the guidelines for for the for the new guidance on the city, the new bylaws. And we proposed a sign that was in to that proportion. So it was actually 32 square feet sign. And that's all he needed. He just needed a sign. So we proposed that and they 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 actually say that that was too small for the building. The problem is based on the bylaws, we cannot go over 32 square feet, but the two signs are still there. So um Answering to the question of, um, let me see what, um, uh, Mr. Pride, um, the the signs we just covered it with banners. So far, uh, they give us a permit that day when we spoke to them. Since you can put temporary banners, just put a couple banners there just to cover those old signs there, while we get the permit. So what we really want to do now is even um, get the variants to reuse those signs but not internally lit, just to cover them with ACN material and put like a three-dimensional letters and goosenecks on top. That's pretty much what we're looking for, just to reuse the same space being there for many years. And um, if, uh, if it gets to the case that we need to remove the light boxes, we can also do that. We can remove the light boxes and just put a brand new sign there, like carved sign or something that is going to be lighted from um, a goosenecks or or indirect lighting. I, I just, if you could just be clear, because you referred to they a couple times, like who's they? Oh, and who's they? Oh, when we went to a special permit, they actually refer us to go to you um, uh, for signing. So we can change that. Uh, we can get the, the variance to do the signs bigger because they say the sign we propose, it was a little bit too much smaller. Actually, it was really small. That's pretty much what it is. But you're, you, just to make sure I'm clear, yeah. you're using the light boxes that were there. You're putting yeah. the new PVC stuff on it. Yeah. You're lighting them by goosenecks. Yep. There's nothing internally lit on them. No. You're just yeah. using the, the light boxes as the a same as space. Exactly. And it's what's one, there? Yeah. It's one. And what's one, there now is just a banner. It's just a banner. Yes. So you'd be removing the banner and replacing it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, we'll be removing the banner. I take the Lexan material or the polycarbonate there, and I'll replace it with ACN material, which is basically aluminum. And uh, on top of that, I'll put the three-dimensional letters, and then we'll put the um, goosenecks on top of the sign. that will light up the sign. Okay. So, so the they is the design review board, the right? Design review, yes. Okay. okay. All right, thank you. Yes. Yeah. I'm sorry, it's been so confusing. That's why it's not easy to explain. But we've been yeah, through no. uh, three or four meetings already, and uh, we always get uh, directed to another. Um, I, yeah. I, I, yeah, yeah, it's not the town's intent to do that. I, because exactly. I, I really don't, I really don't have an issue with this, but I, I, I want to see if other board members have questions or concerns that, or if you want, uh, want to walk through the, uh, to pull up the uh, presentation if he has one. Yes, I do. I would like to see it. I think the public yeah. should see it. He should at least share it, even though we have a copy. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So you, if you can, can, do you, can you share yeah. my screen or I have to? No, uh, you should, you're screen. enabled to share your screen. I, I've set that up. So you should be able to share your screen. Okay. Let me see how can I do that? <clears throat> Give me one second while I find it. 
One, it's on the bottom of the screen. Okay. Um, but it says more. In the middle, there's a green button that says share screen. Do you see mm. that? Like where you have mute and stop video. Oh, yes. Now I see it. I open it well all the way through. Now it's, it's share screen. Okay, got it. Okay, great. So that's that's the first sign. And that's how it's going to look. And as you see, it has the goosenecks on the top. And I'm just going to have the three dimensional letters. And that's uh, pretty much what it is a 20 feet by 27 inches high. And it's going to have the AC, the ACM base. And, and, how that's big the, the, and how big are the letters? The letters are approximately 18 inches. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. And then we have the second one, which is the one in the back that's existing. That's a 10 feet by 27 inches. And this one's going to have like six, uh, I'm sorry, seven inches letters there. And it's going to be in two lines. And that's actually well, I existing. I, I know this is asking a lot. You wouldn't have a picture of the old sign, would you? Yes, we do. We do. Uh, let me see. How can I share that one? Uh, do, do, do. This one right here. So that's the old sign. That's how it looked before. Can you see it there? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's the front sign. So, so it's actually right now painted the, the same color of the building. So it it, it kind of matches the building, blends with the building. You and used that box? Did you use that box? You took that whole box down? No, the box is still there. Still there. Oh. Yeah. And this box is still there too. And but again, uh Jack repainted the whole building and Everything is yep. painted the same color, so it blends with the with the building. I'm sorry, um, Kasumi. I, I see a hand up. Kasumi, did you want to ask a question or make a comment? Uh, I just wanted to make a comment on um. So the gooseneck you're you're proposing, mm -hmm. I don't think that works with the signage you are providing. I I mean signage you want to install. Um, so where the gooseneck is located like right on the top of the signage yes. at the night time you won't be able to actually light up the signage because how the gooseneck and the shade works the light light works um yes. you're gonna be like probably very you can read like bottom half of the sign so you oh. need to either raise up the gooseneck or you need to lower the, the signage box this is actually the gooseneck we're using. I'm going to show it to you. This one directs the light to the front exactly. Can you see that one? Am I? I can't see it. Um, yeah. But like the where, one. yeah, but where the gooseneck Perfect. is coming out, especially the signage on the front one, that's yes. going to cover up um portion of the actual signage. Even it's lighting up on the face of the signage. So you you want to adjust that. Um, yeah, we height, can we can adjust the, the height. Yeah, yeah, height just, of just the for signage. illustration purposes. But uh, but uh, but uh, we can adjust that at any point. Of course, we're gonna do it. So we we don't we don't want to top off the sign. Yeah, because I I'm sure you wanna you want the people to see the actual yes. names of your restaurant. Yes. Hey, if you could stop sharing. All right, let me stop sharing right now. Sure. Okay. Hey, um, you might have to toggle back and forth if other folks have other questions. I I just want to be able to see if other board members have questions or comments. I actually like these signs better than the dockside sign. So oh. we don't need to advertise Kino anymore and stuff like that. That's good. <laughs> Since I've lived here, I still don't understand what it depicts. Is that ham? What is that? Like which one the, 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 on the um the the old signs there's like yeah, a lump of color i don't know what that is right. that was where our sports, logo, the sports images is that what you mean yeah i thought it was ham in the yeah. night <laughs> those graphics are probably back from the early 90s so Oof. <laughs> might have been hungry 
So uh, <laughs> with that, I think now that we've solved the ham issue, we're ready to go to the public. Um, are there any members of the public here uh, to comment on this application? If so, please make yourself visible or raise your hand. Hearing, seeing none. Uh, back to the board, pleasure of the board. And if someone was going to make the motion, a reminder that um, I think we all are in agreement that it is a special permit as opposed to a variance. And Mr. Chair, it's, it would be 101F. 101F. 190, section 101F. I'm just double checking the details, just to make sure we're good yep. there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Did we get any correspondence from the DRB Let regarding this up. application? Did yeah, they produce a letter? You know something? I got to pull a file up. <laughs> That's a good former chair right there helping me out. Uh, got correspondence <laughs> from the fire departments that doesn't have any comments, correspondence from the conservation departments that doesn't. Have any comments? Uh, but if the applicant was put before the design review board a few times, typically the outcome is a letter recommending something. Or there's nothing in the file, Dave. Dave, it may have been when they they recommend something. I think the president know. was there. They recommend to do a bigger sign. Yeah. So Juan, they didn't give you a memo or anything. They sure. they give us they didn't give us any memo. They just recommend during the meeting that we have to apply for a bigger sign because the sign was tiny compared with the size of the building, seven thousand square feet building, and uh, the sign was only like a eight by four. So it I was understand only... you've already stated that. So yeah. they've recommended the sign that you've presented to us. Yes, present it to you guys and see if we can uh, get um, a variance on it because I the law just mm -hmm. no. Historically, the design review board, when they're done deliberating a sign application, would send us a letter and it would articulate what their position is. Um, and it would it would reference a specific sign package. And then we would see that um, and know that they're, you know, what they're recommending. So we're just asking you to represent on their behalf that they have seen this plan and they agree with this plan. And this is the one um, that they're in in agreement with right yes um, okay so um i'm i'm good mr chair i just there's no date on this sign plan that i can see it's just office tech yeah office tech uh you need uh, i don't really have a date on it no i mean again sometimes the yeah. sign companies put dates on it in case things yes get revised they might be so you can keep track of changes and which is the latest um, yes. So sometimes there are dates, but and we would refer to them in our decisions um, in okay. case there's any question down the line. So if we were to proceed to a vote on this, just understand that this is what you got to build. This is what you got to put up. Oh, yes, said, exactly. oh if, we, if this didn't work, we would do something else. No, no. If we approve it, this is what you're building, right? That's exactly if, what if we're you asking to change for. your mind two months from now, you got to come back. Absolutely. You understand that. Okay. Yeah. We're not approving just any sign. We're approving this sign. Okay. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's all we're asking for, exactly. Okay. Just making sure we're all clear. Yes. Are we ready, Mr. Chair? I think we are. Okay. So I move uh, that we grant a special permit uh, pursuant to Section 190.101F of the bylaw uh, to allow the applicant um, to modify the signs on their Property at 1099 Main Street, based on the plant sign package presented to us from SophistTech.com, uh, um, and I don't know if that paragraph calls for us making. Well, Section Three. Um, has some findings, so uh, I will assert that we've found that the sign scale is reasonable. Um, relation to the development scale, viewer distance and travel speed, and sign sizes on nearby structure, that the signs size, shape, and placement serve to define or enhance architectural elements of the building. The sign's design is in harmony with other signage on the same or adjacent structures and provides reasonable continuity in mounting location and height 
proportion of materials. Assigned materials, colors, lettering style, illumination, and form are reasonably compatible with building design, neighborhood context, and use. And the sign size, location, design, and illumination are not judged to present a safety hazard, safety hazard to vehicular or pedestrian traffic. So that is my motion with those findings that this board has made. Seconded. Motion's been made and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing seeing none, regular voting members, Dave. Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. Mickey? Yes. I vote yes. That makes it unanimous. Thank you. Uh, good luck. Yeah. I appreciate it, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Thank you. All right. Next up, case 2442, Joshua Mercurio, 75 Nahan Street. Uh, thank Believe you, this is your case, Mr. McGrail. Yep. It is. Uh, for the record, Attorney Brian McGrail representing Josh Mercurio at uh, 75 Nahan Street. Um, this is an application for determination or a finding uh, with respect to a continuation and extension of a non-conforming use under Article 9, Section uh, 19050 of the uh, Zoning Bylaw. Uh, it relates to the uh, raising of an existing single-family dwelling on at 75 Nahan Street and the reconstruction of a new single-family dwelling. Um, this is kind of unique on the Hunt Street because this property is in the business district. So the proposal, as you will see, meets all of the dimensional requirements of the bylaw. Uh, the new house does, so there's, there's no variance relief needed. Um, we're here at the request of the building inspector because, interestingly, a single-family dwelling is not allowed in the business district. Um, and... Mr. Mercurio actually wants to keep the use um, down zoned to a single family dwelling. Um, and since the new house will be a little bit, will be larger than the existing house, the billing inspector wanted us to obtain a finding from your board uh, that as you would normally do, that's not substantially more detrimental than the neighborhood, uh, which I think it's uh, pretty evident compared to, especially when you factor, you know, that it's in the business district. Um, so that's, that's the purpose that we're here. And I'd like to share some plans, if I may. Please do. Okay. And Josh Mercurio is with me here tonight. He's the owner of the property. He is on. He is online. I think it's best to start with. We submitted an existing conditions plan, and this is the uh, property at uh, seventy-five Nahant Street. Um, you can see, I want you to particularly take note how close it is to the street and also how close it is to the uh, neighbor on the right. It's four feet. Um, this house is in a, um, uh, a state of disrepair. Um, in working with the architect on this, a um, good portion of the, of the house is on disintegrating slab. Uh, it's not on uh, foundation. Um, so it really is in the need of, uh, of a reconstruction. Um, and you can notice that, uh, there's a garage in the back in the shed, which you'll, you'll see reference to in the next plan. So this is an existing condition plan. And again, just if you could take note on these, on really this setback, this setback and the 22 feet on this side. This is the proposed condition site plan. So what's happening here, uh, the architect has kind of rotated the house a bit um, and pulled it away, 4.4, gone to 6.4, um, and pulled it from approximately 8 feet in the front back to 13, and then 22 on the side, and 44 uh, in the rear. Um, I had, I did a zoning table. It is in the business district. I had the uh, uh, site civil do do that. Um, as far as the conditions go, uh, it's six thousand six hundred twenty seven uh, square foot lot. That's obviously not changing. There is no minimum requirement in the uh, business district. The frontage is eighty feet, uh, and the required in the business district is forty. Uh, the height. Um, while it's being raised, it's below what's required. In any event, the business sisters, it's 60 feet max. Uh, this is uh, being proposed at 31, which is consistent with the 
with the area and consistent if you related this to a single family or a, uh, I'm sorry, if you relate to a single residence or a general residence district. Um, lot coverage, um, it is currently 24.7%. Uh, We're actually reducing that, creating more open space at 21.9. It's not even close to the business district. And again, these also meet the requirements. Uh, this also meets the requirement of a single residence and a uh, general residence district. Um, open space is currently 57.2. We're going to increase that to 58.2. In the business district, only 10% is required. Again, we're we're meeting the requirements of both of the uh, of the residential districts, um, and we're not required to. But I'm just pointing that out. Uh, the front setback is going from 8.6 to 13. There is no requirement in the business district. Um, the um, side over here is 22.1. It's going from 27.7 to 22.1, a little bit closer, but well within the tolerance of uh, what's required in the business district, which is none. And in, in the uh, single residence district is 15 and general residence is 10. Um, it's getting a little bit closer because, as you know, we're rotating the house to get it away from this side. And this, uh, as I mentioned, on this side is going from four feet to 6.4 and rear is 48 to 44.4. Uh, so um, I think uh, I'm going to show you the architectural plans. So front elevation, um, the proposed house is, um, first floor is going to be 1,187 square feet. Second floor is going to be 1,195. And then it's going to have an unfinished attic for now of seven, 750 uh, square feet. Um, as you know, in the business district, um, there is no story um, limit. So um, um, Mr. Mercurio, at some point, would like to finish the attic. I want to present that to the board. Typically, you know, when you're dealing in the single residence or general residence district, you have to be careful with the stories in the single residence, only two and a half is allowed and this in the general residence three is allowed. This certainly would be somewhere between two and a half and three, depending on the floor area in the attic. Um, but I did want to reference and, and take note that at some point the attic uh, would probably be finished and it, it does meet the dimensional requirements to do that. Um, currently, it's a two bedroom house. It's going to become a three bedroom house. Um, and those are the highlights. So okay. I think with all due respect, Mr. Chair, I would uh, respectfully suggest that uh, it's a, it's certainly it's an improvement. It's really not substantially more detrimental to the um, existing non-conforming single family use going to another single family use. Yeah, if you could stop sharing, Brian. And uh, with the finding, obviously, we don't receive any correspondence from town department, so there's none to report. I'll just add that uh, it's nice to see a single family home uh, recommended on the Hunt Street, given everything else we've been looking at there. So with that, comments, questions from the board? Yeah, I just, so I'm always trying to remember that when we have a finding and we've been presented with a site, with a architectural plans, is that what they have to meet? Is that exactly what they have to do? Like. Or because it's a finding, as long as it's in the dimensions, we don't have a real, the siding can change, windows can change location, as long as the footprint doesn't. I'm, I'm always a little confused on that. Sorry, I can, yeah, I can. I mean, you know, I've, you know, you can argue it a number of ways. I've always um, believed, and in, in, in you've had conditions that we meet both that you know you're you're relying especially you know going from one and it's a bigger home that you're relying on the architectural plan and making your finding um so we're we're committed to this architectural plan um and you know if we had to come back um like i have on the, on the next case for minor modification if you deem it minor um we're we're willing to do that 
But Brian, normally we would have the color of the siding. We'd have well, whatever. that would be site plan. That would be yeah, site plan. I know. So on a yeah. finding, we don't yeah. get that. You don't get that, but I think you can. You know, as far as size that's being presented on the lot, um, and like I told you, with the height and the bulk of the building. Brian, he could have built this right on a property line, right? If he wanted to, he could. Yeah, so he's not. So I mean, I'm. Yeah. I'm there it, might be yeah. some building code issues doing that, Joe, with you know the separation on other. And buildings. we would probably not find it less, less than ten feet. So yeah, so that's right. We you probably know. wouldn't. Yeah, find yeah, but that. that's, there yeah. is no zoning on that and that lot that he can build it right on the property line, right? I right. Mean, no we have to agree to it. Yeah, it's, it's, it, it, and this is a real odd one. The building inspector and I struggle with it. So kind of the analysis is, is right. It's really the non-conforming use that you're making the finding on because we can, be, you know, we can build that we can comply with the zoning. So, so, you know, we could, we could rebuild this by right um, and meet, as Joe said, all of the dimensional requirements, but it's really an issue with use um, that you're making the determination that, that what we're doing here is not a uh, is not um, substantial. The use is not substantially. We're not substantially changing the use in a detrimental way. So I think you know if we, let's say we were going to build um, a single family house that was going to be five times the size and four stories. You know your board could say, well, no, that's that, that your use is being so extended. We think it is more substantially detrimental to the neighborhood. Um, Brian, could, could he come back a year from now and turn this into a business? Joe, don't give me any ideas. No, I'm just saying. I'm... No, because it's being built. It's you know the permit is being built for a house, single family. Right. Now that, that will state it in the in the in the decision. All right. Just no, but just check. It's you know, and I I agree uh, that in the past I think we have you know, been specific in our decision uh, when we thought it was appropriate, depending on the circumstance. But when it's, it's just a question, finding, when it's just a finding, there's not a whole lot. Yeah. You can't condition it. You're right. You can't condition it. So that's why I was asking. Yeah. I, so, guess, I, mean, you know that, I guess we find that what's presented to us tonight is not more detrimental. And that's right. If yeah. that changes, then that changes our finding. So the, the, there's, a, there's an interesting case. It's a Cumberland Farm case, and in, in, not in Wakefield, but in essence, it, it was a Cumberland Farm in a in a liquor store that 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 it was a legal non-conforming use. It was in a residential district, and they wanted to rebuild it, tear it down, and rebuild it. And what the court said is, well, what's protected is a non-conforming use. So you have a right to rebuild it as long as you meet the dimensional requirements in this residential district for your new building. Hmm. And, and then it becomes an argument. Well, what if you're doubling the size of the Cumberland farm and making it, you know, well, then it might, it will at some point get to a point where you need to make a finding that you're not substantial, there's no substantial extension uh, or, you know, it's not if, if you you would make a finding like, well, you're doubling, tripling the size. So it is an extension of the nonconforming use. And then you would have to make a finding whether it's substantially more detrimental or not. So, you know, in this case, it's, it, you know, the house is bigger, uh, but it but meets hard, that it's going for two, it's... Two. So our argument is that this is not and that's why the building inspector wanted us here. And we're we're proffering that what what we're presenting here is not. The, the the new single family dwelling use is not is is we don't think it even extends it so we think you could make that determination but the building inspector wants a finding that it that it's not substantially more detrimental as a belt and suspender does that make sense yep yep yeah and i'm good i agree that it's not so i'm good all right any other comments or questions before i open it up to the public Brian, are they are they sharing like how the new house looked like with the the side neighbors? He hasn't had a lot of contact with the neighbors. Um, he, I, I, you know, he's he hasn't been there um, too often, Kasumi. And you know, well, this is just a finding. We really didn't reach out. I, they might be on. Maybe they'll be here for public testimony. I don't know. 
Okay. I, my assumption is the neighbors will be happy because it's it's actually pulling it away from their property line. They haven't been notified. Them. Yes. And it's a house in disrepair. So yeah. <laughs> it, it needs no. it needs an upgrade. Yeah. No, if you ride by there and look at it like I'm sure most of us did, if I was a neighbor, I would want it fixed. So Correct. Um, my assumption is a lot of people are happy it's a single family home. I'm with you. Seen too much on that street. Um, any other comments, questions from board members? At this point, I'll open up to members of the public. Is there anyone here that is here to comment on this application? If so, please do so by using the raise hand function or Zoom or making yourself visible somehow. Going once, twice. All right, hearing, seeing none, back to the board. Pleasure of the board. Mr. Chair, I'll move that we grant a finding and determination pursuant to Section 19050A of the bylaw that the proposed uh, reconstructed uh, use of the single family dwelling at 75 Nahan Street based on the plans. Let me get my reference here. Uh, the plot plan by David Terenzoni, dated April 20th, 2023, on the existing plan, and March 5th, 2024, on the proposed plans, and the architectural plans from JMA Architects and Planners, dated January 14, 2024. Um, do not increase the non conforming nature of the structure. However, if one were to find that such an increase did exist, we are also finding that those proposed changes shall not be substantially more detrimental than the existing nonconformities to the neighborhood. Seconded. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing, seeing none, regular voting members, Dave? Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. Mickey? Yes. I vote yes, matters unanimous. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Okay, Thank moving you. on. Thank you. Clerk board comments, with the first comment being the Bruins and the Celtics are both playing tonight. Um, <laughs> Don't we have another matter before we get well, to? We have board? another matter. Oh, right there, we have right? one more. Oh, Ooh. I'm sorry. A little hopeful thinking there. Uh, all right, <laughs> other matters, case 2411-361, Salem Street, request for minor modification. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I think I can be really... Uh, quick and efficient with this attorney, Brian McGrail, representing the applicant, um, Mark uh, Krasansky, who is here tonight. He is the current owner of the property at 361 um, Salem Street. And his uh, contractor, Chris Cormier here is too, is here also, I should say, in case there's any questions that the board has. This is a, a project, it's a two family dwelling that was recently approved by the board. Um, and Mark is just back looking for some um, what we would hope the board would determine would be minor modification. And I'm going to share, if I may, the plans. Okay. So this is, this shows, this might refresh the board's memory. Um, this is kind of the Google map, which shows the location. Whoops. There you go. On Salem Street, which has been approved by the board recently. And this is this is what we're proposing to be built. And this is how the final will look at them. We're going to highlight the changes which have been done on the plans. These were the we've submitted two sets. These are the originals on these sheets with the with the mock-ups of what we want to do, but we also did it in a more efficient fashion down here. So if I can start with the front elevation. Um, what we're looking to do is you can see where it says Dahmer to be added. That's in the back, which you will see in a minute. Um, also looking to do on this front elevation is add a window at the top. They think it balances it off and gives a window for the room where the Dahmer is going to be added. This is the side elevation as you face the building. This is the right side. Um, and all they're looking to do here is just do some uh, an update on a soffit, which really doesn't impact anything. Uh, they're looking to remove this window and relocate a window here and add a window here. And then they want to relocate a window here and then add a bulkhead 
for access to the basement. And this is in the back of the house, the bulkhead. This is the rear of the house. And this is where you can see where the, where the dormer is being added in the back. It's not visual from the street. Uh, this backs up to Route 128, uh, as you know. So there's really no impact to any neighbor here. And in the back here, they're proposing to add a window. There were two windows here in the back that are going to be removed. They need that for kitchen uh, appliance space uh, to get rid of those. And then, uh, as I mentioned, the bulkheads are going to be added in the back. And then this is the other side. So as you face the building, this is the left-hand side. Um, this is the dormer in the back. And then just some relocation of windows, as you can see. That window's coming out and gone. And then there were some columns up front that they still have the overhang here, but they wanted, they, they'd like to get rid of the columns. So the front would be like this before there were columns proposed here and they, they wanted to get rid of those. And that's it. Um, happy to answer any questions, Mr. Chair. Sure. Members of the board, comments or questions? Yeah, curious about the columns. I mean, the windows are what they are when you're laying out the interior. That makes sense. But what's the rationale on the columns? I, I seem to recall that was a nice look. Um, it was really just preference that Mark had. I mean, I, I, if the board is, you know, really wants those, Mark, I don't think it's an issue, correct? You can unmute and answer. Or Chris, either one. Hi, uh, I got my builder and Chris here. Yeah, it's more of aesthetics. So yeah, it's um we could we could put them back in. Totally, totally fine with that as well. I second you, Dave. Dave I'm, I'm sorry, Joe. I'm sorry, Joe. Back. Uh, can you repeat that? I second Dave. I, I I like the columns. I like the look of that. Um, do they want to add some ratings? Uh, the col so the column is gone, but then the platform is still there for the front entry, and that looks like a thirty inch drop. I don't know if it feels safe, just like open, open platform on the front door. Go ahead, Chris. You can you can comment on that. Yeah, that's less than less than thirty inches. But it's just... still like it's just a drop. Like I don't know if I I want. I I won't feel safe. That yeah, I don't feels like need something there. Uh, I can I can put a railing, not a not an issue. With the, with the columns, I, I'm fine with keeping the columns and adding a railing. All right, good comments, but I do want to remind we're we're, we're being asked for possible minor mod, not a. Full design, redesign. Yeah, uh, but understood, Mr. Chair. But they've asked for a lot of changes, and they do seem minor for the most part. Just moving windows and bulkheads. Yeah, David, and I have no problem with yeah. the comments. I just want to before yeah, yeah. this goes off the rails a little bit. <laughs> understood, but yeah, so let's just agree. Are the columns going back in because they were there before, and that's what we approved? Yeah, we'll put them back in. I'll, we'll revise the plan okay. um, for the chair. Uh, if this gets approved, to put them back in. Okay. And I don't know if we need the railing too, but I just, I just again. Uh, Kasumi, is your concern gone if the uh, columns go back in? Um, yes and no, because I can imagine my son kind of drop off two feet yeah. off to the ground and yeah. injured. It's just, that's just that's all. But, yeah, I mean the the whoever lives there, they can put like planters and stuff. So yeah, it's fine. No adding railings. Okay. okay. Well, thank you. So we'll put the columns back. Yeah. Thank you. Any other comments? Questions? Okay, I, I I sense an agreement that we, we consider this a minor mod. 
yeah. and if someone wants to to make a motion mr chair i'll move that we find and determine that the proposed change is at um, 361 salem street based on the um architectural plans from I get my name's right here jacob levine okay i don't know if it was house group or okay where are they it's 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 house group the uh they're stamped plans by jacob h levine okay uh, thank you and, and dave they're dated uh 117 24. right so those plans data 117 24 with the revision expected uh to rehab the columns to the front steps as previously approved by this board um um we determined that they are minor modifications to the previously approved special permit granted by this. Second. The okay, motion's been made. Second, any discussion on the motion? Hearing, seeing none, regular voting members, Dave. Yes. Joe? Yes. Chip? Yes. Mickey? Yes. I vote yes. Matt is unanimous. Thank you, gentlemen. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I'm on to look for a comment. Sorry, I jumped the gun there, guys. Uh, does anyone have anything? Uh, just well, real quick, quick on that. For a while to Greg, don't we? Yeah, we're going to get to that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> real quick on that um, performance standards thing uh, by law that we went through last week. We went through the whole thing basically. Everybody wanted it on the bylaw review committee. Nobody from this committee showed up. They left me hanging. You guys. No, I, I, I talked to you <laughs> for information on the chair of that. So I, I uh, I'm going to reach out. I'm assuming. Yeah, it was still it's early. it's only a first. It's only a rough draft. So, um, but there is, uh, and I apologize because maybe I missed this because I didn't read it to the very last page but there is second to last paragraph a waiver of standards that allows us to waiver any of these that we don't want so yeah i'm going to do that as an individual joe too because as a board you know i i have my opinion i'm not going to represent the board uh i'm going to do that as a citizen though i do think at some point it would be helpful as these things come up for the board to discuss them and to your point i thought you had a good idea maybe even to meet with the planning you know, small set of us meet with the planning board as well. Um, so going yeah. forward, this has my exactly. attention. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, it's just a rough draft. It's going to be a while. So we went through and spent about an hour, um, updated them. Um, and I can share the, the newer rough, the, his rough draft after he sends them out and we'll go from there. That's something to consider though, as you're, you know, moving forward. Yeah, you said you, there's a waiver provision, but again, if you're going to waive a bunch of provisions, you're going to have to go through every single waiver. And just as a process, that's going to make meetings take longer, you know, slow projects down. And if, I mean, if that's what they're looking forward, looking to try to do, then so be it. But that doesn't seem to make any sense. Just, just because it says it's a waiver, you can't give a blanket waiver. Yep. That's why I feel like I do, Greg. I've I've lived through this, so yeah. I. Um, so I guess I've, not. I guess not blunting it. A waiver really means nothing. A waiver provision really means nothing. Yeah, you know more than I do. You've been on longer, so. All right. Anything else? I appreciate it, Joe for you know you. You get to go to that board, represent us, have them complain about us, and then come here and have us complain. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Any other clerk or board comments? Well, I'll start with Greg. We're going to miss you. Mm -hmm. uh, you did a great yes. job here. Um, and we're going to have to find a night where uh, you're not alone with your kids so you can. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We can take it out. Uh, and, and give me a toast to you. This is one of those nights where it's one of the reasons I'm getting off the board. My wife's working. I have all three kids. I'm getting several emails in while we're working. <laughs> Greg, I just hope that in years to come, if things calm down, 
uh, you would consider reapplying because you have been a great asset to the board. Thanks, Jeff. I, I appreciate that. And I will say my time on the board, it's been great. One, just getting to know people in town, you know, and, you know, uh, I know will, that we there's miss a, you. there's a, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, you're a newcomer to town or whatever, but, you know, I feel like giving back to a town that I think is great, um, you know, have family in, and we plan to stay here for, for many, many years. So, uh, I definitely would, would think about joining the board again. It's been good to actually get involved in the town rather than just uh, you know sit on the sidelines. And... As, as soon as Hockey Town does it become your second home. Yeah, yeah, as soon as Hockey Town, or maybe when it like warms up, or, or maybe it'll burn to the ground before that. Be... <laughs> <laughs> Greg, how long have you been on? Six years? Yeah, two terms. Was it, was it the MBTA? Like, was it the MBTA? Was it the MBTA subcommittee that did it? No, I mean, it's in it, it reality, it's work. I, I started a new job at the beginning of January. That just is, is a, a, a large step up and a lot a lot larger role at a lot larger company. So, yeah, uh, not here. Good luck with everything. Much so. Maybe I'll see you over Bear Hill with my sister. But they're quite every day when the pool opens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks, Greg. And good luck thanks, to you. Greg. Appreciate it having you on the board it's been it's been a pleasure um with your insights and your contributions so gonna miss you and again if circumstances change we'd love to have you back quite a quite a six years considering the pandemic and, and yeah, still doing yeah, this yeah. via zoom and yeah I, I, I can't speak for before you got here or i got here but this had to be one of the one of the busiest couple terms that you'll see um although i may be speaking out of turn um but uh, a lot of work and a lot of late nights and wow. So we'll miss you, but we'll see you. See you over at Walton. Yeah. See you at Walton. And maybe I'll uh, show up at some meetings if, you know, if, <laughs> Just the, uh, if the mood suits me. I'll make note yeah. of the first one you come to. I'll put my hand up. <laughs> put my hand up as soon as the meeting starts. All right, I'll, I'll I'll ride point on finding a night for us to get together. So, and Absolutely. I'll keep everyone obviously in the loop. So, thanks again, Greg. Thanks. So um, anything else? We got to approve some minutes. Oh, Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the meeting minutes of the April tenth, twenty twenty four meeting. Seconded. Aye. Okay, those can be done by voice vote. All those in favor. Uh, one one quick last question. Could we please discuss rules or no, only kidding. <laughs> summer schedule yet? It's um ten. So what are you going on vacation? Because that will tell us when we're meeting. Oh, okay. I don't have it in front of me, but um I'll let you know. Because <laughs> I know you have you know. your vacations to when we're meeting. No. <laughs> um, do we have the dates yet are they somewhere i just use the previous years and then if you guys when the time gets closer if you want to change them you change them um okay. i just don't have it in front of me but it is posted. maybe if we can just talk or just say what they are it's just i want yeah. to have them no no next time yeah next time okay next time. yeah no we're not that close i didn't okay. know how we did it so that's great just tell us when it is Okay, I think it's in the middle of July and the middle of August. Yeah, just yeah. whatever those dates are. Okay. These just All right. Them. Oh, geez. For those that can make it, a reminder: we got uh, town meeting Monday night. Um, so they think it's going to spill over too. They might be a couple nights. I think, I think so. It's be at least two. Yeah. yeah. And then the zoning things likely won't even be till the second night so i don't think i'll be there monday but i'm gonna try to be there what what is it not monday is it monday the first night i think it's i think it's night. tuesday and thursday tuesday and thursday i thought oh no 29 monday. i thought it was monday monday monday, 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 monday night. night okay yeah i got the cambridge city council thing but i might be able to make it there by the end monday night um and tuesday is better for me too so um, oh, i'll be up in the bleachers with you down meeting for you Tom. I'll be up on the bleachers with Chip. All right. <laughs> Tell him not to vote. Yeah, I'm going to try to be there as much as possible. But I don't know. Look for Jim McBain. He might be there still. <laughs> <laughs> we yell out him as a as a non-resident. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, 
I mean, a lot of it is the financial stuff, and that, that'll be the usual discussion. But there's there's some zoning stuff on there. It'd be interesting to hear the comments and discussion. Yeah, I'll be there. Be interesting. Yeah, as always. All right. With that, right. I think a uh, motion to adjourn is in order. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.